Good morning. My name is Chris Ndikumana. I'm the host of the Kanguka Broadcast. You are about to listen to today's broadcast translated from Kirundi to English. Be blessed. Today's Thursday. It's been a few Thursdays now that we've been trying to answer the following question. Is it necessary to belong to a local church? I've mentioned before that the local church and religion are two different things because many people confuse the two. When you ask people if they've been born again, if they've accepted Jesus into their life as their Lord and Savior, often the response is, I'm a member of such and such church, as if being a member of a church guarantees salvation or entry into heaven. It's important to understand that being part of a church is not a guarantee of going to heaven. The church is a place where we meet other Christians and where we hear the word of God that can transform us and lead us to salvation. So being a member of any church doesn't mean you're saved. It's not the denomination that will save you, but it's the blood of Jesus, it's faith in Jesus that will save you. On the day of judgment, you won't be asked which church you belong to. It's important to know that. But today we can see that there are many doctrines driving the children of God out of churches. Many people say it's no longer necessary to be in a church, especially now in the age of social media. They say, you don't need to go to church, stay at home, you can follow everything online, you can follow everything on Zoom you don't need to go to church, but I've shown you that the Word of God urges us to be together with the children of God, the body of Christ, that's what makes the church. We need to belong to a family, meaning the church is a family. It's important to understand that the local church is a family. There are also people who often ask why we no longer see miracles like those we read about in the book of Acts. In the time of the apostles, there were many miracles, God manifested in an extraordinary way, and many people ask where the miracles have gone, where the power of God has gone. The problem is not the lack of miracles, but the problem lies in the nature of the word that is preached today because it is very diluted and interpreted in many ways. And especially today, there is no longer the fear of God as it was in the early church. Let's stop conforming to the world and let's stay in the word of God. Romans chapter 12 verse 2 clearly says that we should not conform to the present age. But today, the church is conforming to the world. That's why there is no transformation. The Holy Spirit isn't moving powerfully in the church today. More emphasis is placed on religion religion dominates. The church isn't like it was in the time of the apostles anymore. If you read Acts chapter 2 verse 42, you'll see a clear difference if you compare the two eras. Acts chapter 2 verse 42 says they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine, that's the first thing, in fellowship, that's the second thing, in the breaking of bread, that's the third thing, and in prayers. These four things are essential for the church to have good spiritual health. First, the teaching of the apostles. Today we can see many teachings. Then there's fellowship, but that's what's lacking today. Then there's also the breaking of bread. When we talk about breaking bread, it's not about the Lord's Supper. It means the community could be together and eat together. That's the breaking of bread. That's what was called agape in some churches at the time. And finally there's also prayer. If you look at the church today, you see two things. There's teaching and prayers, but you rarely see fellowship. You rarely see the breaking of bread. But these four things were what made the strength of the early church. I want to talk a bit about fellowship. If you read this whole chapter, you'll see how the people of the church helped each other. The richer helped the poorer. In fact, there were no more poor people in the church because those who had means helped those who didn't. It means there was a lot of care for others. Today, we don't care for others. It's every man for himself. And especially when you're on Zoom, if you're on the internet and behind your screen, you can't know your neighbor's problems. If there's a poor person in the church, you'll never know. Today in the church, there are poor people who may be sick and even die without the pastor knowing. These are things you can notice when you are physically together. It can't be done on Zoom or YouTube. So, in God's thinking, it's important for the children of God to be together, and it's important to have love among them as Jesus said. Jesus gave a new commandment. He said, love one another. By this, all will know that you are my disciples. Before I conclude, I'd like to emphasize that you shouldn't attend just any church. You need to pray so you can be guided by the Holy Spirit. You must be in a church that can provide you with good spiritual food, a church that fears God, a church where there are teachings that can help you grow spiritually. It's important to understand that the church is a family, and you'll feel like you're in a family. And in all this, you must be sure to be led by the Holy Spirit.
It's now time to continue our study of the book of Chronicles. We're still studying 2 Chronicles chapter 20. I mentioned earlier that this week will only be focusing on the 20th chapter because it's a chapter that has transformed me and it's filled with many revelations for those who are desperate. If you're feeling hopeless, you're not sure how to escape your problems, you should carefully read this chapter with the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Yesterday, I spoke about a prophet named Jehaziel. He's mentioned in verse 15. It's a very interesting verse. It shows us that Jehaziel had faith, he had determination. He saw what others didn't see. He said, Listen, all you of Judah and you inhabitants of Jerusalem, and you, King Jehoshaphat. He wasn't even afraid of the king. He also encouraged King Jehoshaphat to have faith. He said, Thus says the Lord to you, Do not be afraid nor dismayed because of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but God's. Let me speak to all of you who are desperate. If you have faith, it won't be you who fights. You can't fight because you don't have the means to fight. You don't have the money to fight. You don't have the strength, but the Lord is with you if you have faith and you keep your eyes on him. He continued in verse 17 and what he said is very interesting. He said, You will not need to fight in this battle. Position yourselves, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, who is with you, O Judah and Jerusalem. Do not fear or be dismayed, tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord is with you. But first, you have to go out. Stepping out is a step of faith that shows your trust. I really appreciate what happened here because they truly received a revelation. You must not be afraid. You who are sick, facing an incurable disease, perhaps it's AIDS or cancer. Do not despair because God is able. I remember when I was desperate, when I couldn't see how to get out of the situation I was in. I couldn't even pay the rent. I didn't know how to eat. And the devil whispered in my ear, telling me, you're going to die. And I replied, even if I die, I'm going to heaven, because I was determined. Sometimes, you have to know how to respond to the devil. The devil wants you to complain, he wants you to be discouraged, he wants you to say it's over for you. No. You must not give in. You must resist with faith. This prophet, Prophet Jehaziel, he walked by faith and not by sight. There was nothing concrete showing victory because they were surrounded by enemies. But I really love verse 20. Verse 20 says, So they rose early in the morning and went out into the wilderness of Tico, and as they went out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah and you inhabitants of Jerusalem, believe in the Lord your God, and you shall be established, believe his prophets, and you shall prosper. Now it's Jehoshaphat who's filled with faith and encouraging everyone, just as I am encouraging you. He said, Believe in the Lord. In other words, he meant, Do not trust in our army, because the army is inadequate. He said, Believe in the Lord. Those of you listening, do not trust in money or intelligence. Trust in the Lord your God, and you shall be established. Verse 21 is even more interesting. It says, And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed those who should sing to the Lord, and who should praise the beauty of holiness, as they went out before the army and were saying, Praise the Lord, for his mercy endures forever. Here, there are two things I want to draw your attention to. The first thing is that the singers walked ahead of the army. In other words, the three armies that attacked Judah, the Moabites, the Ammonites, and the people of Mount Seir, they were not facing the army. No. They were facing the singers. He placed praise in front. That's what I always say. When you're desperate, you need to praise God, you need to worship God, you need to talk about His greatness. That's the most powerful weapon. Praise is a formidable weapon. They faced the singers. The soldiers were behind. But in front, it was the singers. It's written in verse 21, and what did they say? They said what we've already seen in 2 Chronicles chapter 5, during the dedication of the temple of God. They said, praise the Lord, for his mercy endures forever. When you speak these words, it's very powerful. Why? Because in Psalm chapter 22 verse 3, it says that the Lord is enthroned in the praises of his people, he dwells in the midst of praise. In tomorrow's broadcast, we'll see the reaction to this powerful praise. May I am bless you and have a pleasant day. If you're blessed or transformed by Kanguka teachings, you can send us a WhatsApp audio on plus 2567813773337.